Well, now we're going to move beyond the local authentication. We're going to talk about using another database, in this case, the secure ACS server. We're going to talk about how it works, how well it scales out, its performance capabilities, the support that it has for RADIUS and TACAX Plus. We'll try to make sure we understand the uh, concepts of what TACAX Plus is, uh, you know, how it works as a protocol, what RADIUS is. We'll be talking about the versions of uh, the iOS software we need to have running to work with the different options that we have. And then we'll talk about some of the basics, again, kind of like we did before, give you a basic tour of the web GUI that you would use to manage the Cisco Secure ACS server. Now, when we look at the process of what goes on when we do a full authentication, it's basically the idea, again, that somebody's connecting to my router, and the router is going to prompt them for a username and password. But this time, instead of using its local database, the router is going to take the information, send it out to the Cisco Secure ACS server, and at that point, that server will do the authentication. That server will also not only say, yes, that's uh, correct, the right username and password, but it can also say that they're authorized to use the router and can report what they're doing or let us know that they've logged in. So it gives me the full line of authentication, authorization, and accounting that I want to use. Now, there are several versions of the ACS server, and it really depends on, of course, the issues of scalability, of uh, redundancy, of the numbers of, uh, of uh, users, the numbers of clients, and everything else that, again, with anything else, makes the decision, what do I need? And again, it's a capability thing. So there's the whole Cisco Secure ACS for Windows. There are a couple of uh, Cisco ACS Solution Engines and ACS Express. So depending on the size of your company, depending on the number of objects you're trying to manage, the number of users, you'll find one that's the right size for what you need to have in your particular organization. Well, let's take a little view of um, what it would take to create a connection to a RADIUS server, to a TACAC server and including that in our uh, path of authentication for users wanting to connect. Now, I've already created, if I do a show run, and look at this, we're going to use this begin uh, pipe command, begin user. So you can see that I've created in my running configuration here two users. We did this from a previous example, one named Ken, one named Christy. Now, if you aren't sure about that pipe command, what I did is uh, by putting in the pipe and just basically, it's not like a full regex type of a search, but I can basically say, you know, don't show me all of the, the uh, running configuration. Instead, begin uh, by the first instance of the word user. And that's what showed up here is the first instance of the word user. All right, so uh, we're going to get into our global configuration. And from here, we're going to create a radius server. So. The command is to start off with the radius server. I'll show you the question mark options again. There's a number of things that we can do use to uh, work with our radius. Now, uh, so much as this course isn't about the radius server itself, it's just important to know that the radius server has a lot of capability. It's a full AAA authentication, authorization, and accounting. In fact, some a lot of people attribute radius as having a better accounting package. But uh, part of what we'd have is um, authorization commands or attributes or a lot of different things that help us with um, specifying uh, information we need to connect. But we're going to assume a bunch of, uh, of uh, default settings for RADIUS, which is okay to do. Generally, that's what is going to happen. So we're going to specify the host, which is asking for either the host name or the DNS address of that particular server. Now, after I type in the word host, you'll see that it asks for host name or, or IP address. If I put in a host name, the assumption is that I've also created a name server lookup um, as a client for this router, so it knows where to resolve the name. If I put in a host, then we're assuming that the routing table knows how to reach that host. So I'm going to put in just the uh, IP address. And as with most um, of these servers, there is going to be a shared secret. So the next option which you saw here from the uh, previous um, uh, section is key. And I'm going to put in uh, my pre-shared key of Cisco. Uh, that's my favorite password, you can tell. While I'm at it, I can also set up a TACAX server that's basically uh, going to ask for the same type of information. It could actually be the same server. Uh, it wouldn't make sense for me to put uh, them both together. My thought here is uh, to try to talk about what would happen if uh, they were unreachable. And then we've already got the local accounts. Now, I'm going to put in the AAA authentication. Again, this is for our login. 
and we're going to go with the uh, default default meaning a default group we haven't created any by the way default group also means default for all of the uh, potential uh, logins and lines and VTY and everything else uh, then we're going to put in group and we're going to say use the group of radius servers and then use the group of uh, tack acts because I haven't created a, a group yet so I'm just kind of doing this manually and lastly at the end of this as I said before to put the local if you don't put the local in there then we have the problem of uh, if the radius and the tack acts don't make it uh, they do, uh, that is that they are offline and not reachable different than if they just return and saying you, you did it wrong then we want that local authentication to be there for us uh, without that uh, add-on, you could lock yourself out of the router. Well, just like that, we've got those things uh, set up. So uh, I'll exit out of here, exit out, try to come back in, and I'll try uh, Ken and my password of Cisco. And this time, notice it didn't just, bam, come right on the screen. That's because it's now trying to reach out to a non-existent radius server. Then it's going to reach out to a non-existent um, TACAC server and then hopefully default itself in to our um, local uh, login. But that's, um, that's the uh, process. That's why the pause and there you saw that it came in. Had I not put the word local in, I would have just now locked myself out and uh, got to pound my head on the uh, table and wonder how do I fix this without calling somebody and asking them to reboot the router. All right, so those are your, uh, some of the other options that you have as far as um, using the, um, the different servers as a part of the authentication process.